Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, we're doing some spoilers for the newest issue of X-Men. This is uh, one of the final Jonathan Hickman uh, X-Men issues that's out. Uh, came out uh, here on uh, May 26th. Uh, maybe we'll update this video today. I've got so much stuff to get caught up on, by the way. I, if, again, several of you have sent me some really nice comics to review and promote and do things in email. I promise I will get to them. Uh, some year. Uh, no, no, I, I don't mean it that way. Just soon. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on and uh, the, there's a lot of people, people contact me from every which place, which I realize is my own fault. I've opened up lots of different channels of communication and that's uh, that was a terrible idea. Uh, just, just now everything is a little bit everywhere. Anyway, this isn't about that. Uh, more just an apology. Uh, if I haven't gotten back to you soon, I promise I will. Uh, this is X-Men number 20, uh, Jonathan Hickman. This, this issue um, it, it's better. So I was originally told this issue, even though it had Nimrod on the cover, would have very little Nimrod. And that's not true. Uh, it definitely has a lot of Nimrod. Th by the way, spoilers. This is definitely going to spoil this. Um, and we're talking about the next X-Men event, which kind of you could see coming, um, which we'll get. Well, let's just start from there. So at the very, very end of the comic, and we'll talk a little bit about how we got to that point, uh, we get a, a promo for Inferno. And Inferno we knew was coming, or we suspected it was coming, for a couple reasons. Uh, we did know that there was going to be a late fall, winter kind of event. Uh, same kind of relative time slot programming as uh, Ten of Swords. And Inferno was was going to be, uh, it, it, was, it was the odds-on guess uh, for what was going to happen. I mean, partly because Marvel is loving uh, kind of redoing Heroes Reborn and, and kind of re you know redoing these events from the past. But also because we saw Inferno uh, pop up as a, a collected trade edition and some other things. And it had been long rumored uh, that Inferno was, was going to be revisited at some point. And so that is what we're getting. So Inferno this fall, uh, this is reportedly what uh, Jonathan Hickman's gonna kind of be focusing on. Uh, and, and so that's, you know, with uh, Gary Duggan taking over the X-Men title, this is kind of where we can expect to see uh, Jonathan Hickman kind of make the next uh, big impact. Um, so how did we get here? Well, first off, you might be asking, is this uh, truly a sequel to Inferno? And the answer looks to be no, on all the counts, no. Um, Inferno was uh, a 1988-89 storyline. It really kind of focused on a couple things, like Fall of the Mutants. It had a, a few different plates spinning at once, but uh, the, the main crux of it uh, was this idea of Ilyana, uh, kind of being uh, consumed by uh, by Limbo and by uh, Sim and Nazareth um, and uh, kind of invading Manhattan, invading the Earth with a bunch of demons, uh, people from Limbo kind of invading uh, the, you know, that area. Um, the other thing, though, that was going on is Nazareth had made a bargain with Madeline Pryor, uh, the ex-wife, uh, mother uh, of, uh, with Cyclops, and uh, she had been she had been kind of skirted off to the outback with the X Men when Cyclops was basically two timing her with uh, Jean Grey. G the original Jean Grey came back, and Cyclops just kind of went in that direction. And uh, heartbroken, Madeline Pryor kind of headed on off to Australia. Started kind of a thing going with uh, Scott Summers' brother Alex and Havoc. And anyway, so she she goes full demon and. The uh, Marauders are there, Mr. Sinister, and, and it just it, it, a big, big, you know, hell on earth fight. Um, so there you go. That's kind of that's kind of more or less. That's not what we're getting this time. Um, Madeline Pryor seems to have no indication of being part of this event. This seems more based around uh, kind of the this broken promise aspect to uh, to Mystique. So this is where we'll hop back to X Men Twenty. Uh, basically. You know, the crux of this issue is a bit of a suicide-ish mission where Mystique is going to go up to Orcus. This is that uh, space station kind of orbiting the sun that we saw during House of X Powers of Tin. And she's going to blow it up because uh, they're going to bring Nimrod online and Nimrod you know, being brought online would be bad for the mutants. So Mystique kind of goes in there as a one woman, uh, you know, a destruction crew with the promise that if she is successful in her mission, uh, that they'll they'll move her wife uh, Destiny to the front of the line to be resurrected. They haven't been resurrecting Destiny mostly because Moira uh, is saying no because Destiny is a precog, could see the future, would you know quickly understand a little bit of the shenanigans that Moira is up to in this timeline and other things, and that would be 
that would be bad. It's it's a little unclear um, how you know people like Jean Grey and Rachel Summers and and other precogs aren't reading some of this, uh, but I guess they're mentally shielded. I, I I don't know. Like Magneto walks around without his helmet a lot of the time. I I think you could get some of this information from there. They'd be like, hey, we we anyway. But it's it's you know you you're polite. You don't read minds, I guess. But now that works for. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. So uh, this this uh, this mission, uh, which is cool, uh, Mystique goes there and tries to take it out. She fails in her mission. Nimrod is brought online, but uh, she does a kind of in in order to prevent the whole station from blowing up and and uh, them wrecking everything. Uh, one aspect of the Nimrod personality um, that is the the husband uh, of our scientist uh, dies. Uh, now, he had already died earlier in House of X, Powers of Ten, and here his consciousness dies a second time. So this is uh, this is just doubling down on uh, the hatred uh, <laughs> that uh, the Dr. Gregor is going to have for the mutants. So she fails. Part of the condition, uh, if she failed, uh, you know, Magneto and, and Xavier were basically like, we're not going to help you. And... Um, uh, Magneto and, and Xavier acting like full-on villains here. I'm sorry. I, I There's no other way to put it. And for whatever reason, this triggers uh, X-Men fans right now. But, you know, basically, you know, she comes, Mystique comes back. Uh, she's been killed. She gets resurrected. Um, they're like, uh, you know, what happened here? And, you know, Mystique tells them, you know, you backed up my mind. You know what happened. And Magneto's like, yeah, we want to hear you say it. And so she has to admit she fails. And then she asks, you know, what about my wife? And, uh... You know, Xavier's like, well, what about her? You know, you know, basically, screw it. We're not going to resurrect your wife. Um, and it's so it, it, there's no way to kind of look at this in my mind and not see Xavier and Magneto. There's a lot of dialogue in here that just absolutely is is dodgy as hell. Um, you know, you can call them a cult, you can call them villains, whatever you want. But uh, you know, when when Xavier's saying, you know, like Eric said, we made a deal. Only your failure prevents its completion. And of course, she does fail and. Uh, you know, even when, when Mystique's like, I don't know about this, you know, Mystique, you know, the this ter mutant terrorist is like, I don't know about going up to the space station and blowing up everybody. Um, you know, Magneto's like, uh, you know, we made a deal. And uh, Xavier's like, we have among us other monsters, some who do not lie to themselves about what they are. It's like, I, what, what the hell are you, <laughs> you know, anyway. So this comic basically ends with uh, Xavier and Magneto heading down into the Moira place, uh, her no place. Uh, somewhere underwater. She's got an underwater kind of fish tank uh, below Krakoa. So yeah, she likes looking. It lives in an aquarium. Um, why not? And uh, we see Moira who's reading Irene Adler's um, books, uh, basically her prophecies. Um, I think since she's been down there for over a year, she's probably long since read all this stuff. Uh, but she gets Netflix. It's all good. Um, and the voiceover is, this place will seem to be hope for our kind. When those days come, remember these words, bring me back. Um, if they cannot, if they will not, then burn that place to the ground. And that leads into our, our kind of promo image for this fall, Inferno. And you see in the little images there, Mystique is kind of front and center. Uh, there's a baby in the mix. There was a baby that was uh, kind of referenced a little bit with uh, Dr. Gregor on the space station. So there's, there's a few things going on there. But basically, this looks to be Mystique's had enough. And it's time to, uh, you know, burn the place to the ground, thus Inferno. And we see the, a couple of people, we see the White Queen or, you know, we see Magneto and, and Xavier and, 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 you know, thankfully Moira. It's nice to actually see Moira, you know, pop back up again. Um, <laughs> it's been a while, right? So all of this, all of this is to say, you know, maybe this is the moment in the X titles where we're actually going to kind of move the plot along. This idea of destiny and uh, and you know being dead and not being able to be resurrected and all this kind of stuff. This has been a plot that was really established in House of X: Powers of Ten when this whole thing began. Uh, we continue to see very weird behavior out of Xavier and Magneto uh, and everything else. So um, feels like a shoe is going to drop. We are going to get a few more hints to all this uh, during the Hellfire Gala. So that's nice. Maybe you know maybe Moira shows up with a spicy outfit. That could be. Um, that who knows uh but the question becomes uh is you know what are the things a lot of people are really excited about house of x powers of 10 and it, it generated a huge amount of interest and that interest seemed to wane a bit um as kind of more titles uh came in and a lot of the plot lines that hickman had kind of teed up around the sentinel program orcus uh certainly moira and kind of all these pieces uh seemed to get ignored in favor of kind of other 
significant other random things that they got themselves into. So what are you excited about this development? Are you excited about Inferno? Uh, are you going to come in and, and buy in to Inferno? It's likely to be another 24 issue plus event. Um, what is the, are these the moments that you're hoping for to see the title moving forward? Or are you just enjoying the X-Men ride? And in many ways, maybe you look at this and go, I, I'm not happy about this because I've been enjoying what it is. And I really don't like a sense that it's, uh, that we may be moving things up. Uh, that we, you know, I, I don't want this ride to come to an end. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Inferno, the next big kind of X-Men event uh, confirmed. And uh, yeah, it, are you excited? Are you not? Let me know. Thanks for listening.